Hello. I'm going to take you back, or us back, a couple of years. Uh, Financial Times, Alphaville, uh, May 2006, and Izzy giving us a bit of an article. I note that Izzy now is editor of Alphaville. So, for all of us that have given Izzy so much love over the last ten years... um, Our faith was well placed. So the subject here is um, effectively Facebook and Google and... Facebook and Google, that'll do. And you might know that Alphaville does um, a, a, a bringing together of brains, which is called Camp Alphaville, every year. And this was before the... Uh, 2016 Camp Alphaville. In the run-up to Camp Alphaville on July the 1st, we are profiling the panels and discussions we've got lined up by trying to explain why we chose the subject in the first place, which is why Alphaville is good, because it tries to explain things. All angles of things, which is good, instead of just getting bluh which is what you so often get from other bits of the interwebs. So here's the rationale and background to the um, tent, or or yurt, (laughs) at Camp Alphaville, where they were going to do End of the Free Internet. So that's what this is about. End of the Free Internet panel, which I will be moderating at noon on the day. That's Izzy. Featuring blah blah blah, oh, Felix is there, Felix Salmon, uh, Fusion. The premise is simple. The days of free internet, free web platforms, free digital services and free freemium generally may be coming to an end. The key to this about turn is the long-term unsustainability of cross-subsidized business models based on advertising or data resale. I'll go on a bit, as well as the true cost of supporting and protecting our internet infrastructure from tragedy of the commons side effects. One of my favourite subjects, tragedy of the commons, I'll leave the rest of that, Um, because it's not the sort of thing you can listen to and understand straight off. So I'll get through most of this as quickly as I can. If and when that... If and when that day arrives, we suspect one of two things may happen. 1. The data-based business model that a whole bunch of billion-dollar tech stocks have relied on for outsized valuations will be rendered moot. People will become aware of the fact that if it's free, they're the product and flee. If it's free, they're the product, so it's best to get out of there. That's, you'll understand that as the, what we're getting with Facebook at the moment. It might be wonderful, if you like that sort of thing. It is free, but you are the product. As in, you create everything, and Facebook uses and abuses that product, you. You are the product, and you are used and abused by Facebook. You could say... Similar here on YouTube, I suppose. But Facebook's a better example. And Google, overall, is a better example as well. Uh, Leave the rest of that. We'll crack on. So number two, people, people's continuing resistance to overt ad consumption and the content industry's pressure to cover costs lead to increasingly poor quality and biased content. Um, So obviously... They can't make all the money out of you. They need also advertising. And they've got to put the advertising in front of your face. And the idea is here that your face will get sick of it. In this panel, as a consequence, we'll be asking the media practitioners what the price of neutrality really is. Did journalism and media, as Noam Chomsky 
has always claimed, shoot itself in the foot the day it opened itself up to ad-based cross-subsidization. Uh, where should we go for this? In the end, base, I'll cut it short. In the end, uh, there will be soon, uh, let's say, for uh, news, um, a space for a respected, what do we call it, institution? Sounds like it's top down. A respected place where all the false news and news and everything can be filtered through the safe, reliable thing and then pushed out to people and people will pay for the reliable information which is just a return to, I mean, you could call this filter uh, the Times of London or whatever it used to be in the past so this is all a bit disjointed, but the, the whole subject is quite disjointed. And I think um, it gets it wrong on one point, which is the point of this video, which I'll get to. But what we have at the moment, and we can call it a real groaning in the belly of the investment community, is... Um, an accounting problem or question that is more and more starting to arise and simply put it's something like uh, I was about to say for a bank but you I'll try and explain so you don't we're not talking about banking now and uh, it's balance sheet assets and liabilities we're talking about um, if you're an accountant generally is it a cost or not Basically, if it's a cost, it's a liability. And say, for instance, keeping all the details of your bank account and all the information about you, that is a cost to a bank. It's a liability on the balance sheet. As in, it comes off against that. It's got to be paid for. It's a liability. Keeping all that information, you need a huge, you know, what you need to keep all the information. And it costs got it right but over the last what is 20 years now 15 20 years let's say the google facebook people do their accounts by saying the data the data that they have of everything and everybody is not a liability it's an asset and has been accounted for in the valuations of the companies as such so we have a problem or do we and that's the question for a bank keeping all the data is a liability for Facebook keeping all the data is an asset which one is right or is it different in the different cases and the investment community is having a real rumble tumble about this at the moment because Facebook and co are fine when they're doing fine but when they're not doing so fine and people start thinking about things they see things like this and say this is an anomaly should this anomaly continue etc so what we have is the free will it remain free only if they can exploit you and me if we kick up enough fuss and they can't exploit us as much as they would like to, then they will have to rely more on adverts in your face. The The premise of the Camp Alphaville panel was, will we stick, you know, will we hold up, will our numbers hold up on the free internet with so many adverts in our face? And the panel, as I remember, I think I followed it, said no and we're going to have to move towards more paid content on the internet i've got a slightly different take on this and i got this from being in england over the last week i think people like adverts i think it's almost um, a massaging of their own egos that they like um, a big company to t try and come and seduce them Obviously, 
it isn't that I don't like adverts. I, you know, I just keep away from them. But I think people say that they hate adverts. But I think as long as the adverts aren't really stuffing annoying, I think people's egos are a little tickled by them. And I think they will put up with adverts much more than the intelligentsia on Financial Times panels will actually appreciate. So the question in this video is, do you think that people will put up with more advertising? And do you think that people with, will try and withdraw themselves from Facebook, Google, hard to get away from Google, out of Facebook because they will not want to be the product? Because I have a slight suspicion that there's a similar thing going on with wanting to be the product. I think people are quite tickled about wanting to be the product as well, because in that way they can, in some kinky way, compare themselves to superstars of the, of that really do it professionally. They're doing it as just accidental amateurs, but they th can get some sort of odd reflected glory from um, the absolute pro professionals. So, interested to see what you think. Um, I don't think it's that people are stupid enough to continue with Facebook and other platforms where you have to feed them information. I am think I'm saying is that they quite like doing so and will probably continue to do so. See you down there. Bye.